question two, um, this is one we get a lot. Um, it's a pretty easy one to clarify, but on a pattern of holes being identified as the datum feature, would the datum feature be the single hole or all of them? So we have the sample drawing here where we're showing datum B directly applied to this size dimension, and it's a pattern of six holes. Well, just because this leader arrow is pointing to this specific hole does not make this hole datum B. What it does do is make all six of these holes datum features. Each one of these holes is, date, is part of datum feature B, the feature being this pattern, but it creates a single datum. So we can use a pattern. Now, oftentimes, this is how the assembly works, right? This pattern of holes is one of the assembly features. It's the, it's the locating feature. Um, for this part when it gets put into the assembly. When you bolt this down, this pattern of holes sets the location of this part. We see datum plane A down here, setting translation up and down and rotation, a couple rotations, right, in and out of the page. But what locates this part in the assembly is this bolt pattern. And that's perfectly fine. In fact, like I said, that's probably how most parts work when they're a flanged part like this. So it's a pattern of six holes, and all six holes are datum features and create a single datum. So let's go through what that kind of means visually. So if you try and picture the uh, datum simulator, in my opinion, that's the best way to try and understand what's getting across here is what sort of di di um, fixture, what sort of um, functional gauge would you use to set up the datum simulation? If you're using a CMM, it's a little more conceptual, but it's the same. What you're going to do is make sure to locate that datum simulator at true position. And I'm missing a couple of basic dimensions here. Maybe they're on a different view, but you would have some sort of angular basic dimension. And that's not 45, but you'd have some sort of angular basic dimension locating the true position as well as the radial diameter of that bolt circle. And now you can have a, a comment on your drawing if you don't want to clutter with basic dimensions or if maybe your inspection department has access to the CAD model, you can say query CAD model for basic dimensions. But essentially what you're saying is my basic dimensions define these true positions, right? These true positions are CAD perfect. And that's where I put my datum simulators. My datum simulators are going to expand centered at these true positions. They're going to expand slowly, simultaneously, each one at the exact same time until they hit the high points of each one of these cylinders. It's going to capture simultaneously the irregularities and the high points of each one of these cylinders all the way around at the same time center so that you can picture this part kind of locking in keep in mind you got to stay connected to plane a first but it's going to drop down on a and expand these little collets if you want to picture it that way around each one of these holes and lock in and that's how it's going to assemble right so we're mimicking how it's assembled by using our datum simulators now they're expanding because we're at rmb if any of you are familiar with LMB or um, MMB, if you were to see material modifiers in these datum features here, you have what's considered a maximum material boundary, if it's MMC inside these. And then you have a fixed functional gauge, right, where you just use the pin at MMB there rather than an expanding. But those pins, nonetheless, would still be centered on true position. And we're still creating a single datum. So whether it's RMB or LMB or MMB, we're using datum simulators expanding or fixed, but they will be centered at basic or at true position. So by doing that, we are locking in location and orientation. It's not just a single axis of one of these holes. What we're doing is creating this datum reference frame. And every datum reference frame has three orthogonal planes regardless of how your features come in, you're creating three, conceptually creating three orthogonal planes. The first orthogonal plane being A down here. So we know that if we're going to bring this part in, we'd lock it down to A. Now we got to figure out the other two orthogonal planes. How those are created is by this pattern of holes. 
So you can see B or the blue plane here and the green plane here being created by the pattern of holes. If you want to picture a single plane in an axis, the axis being the center of that bolt circle and the plane being the symmetrical plane of that, you can do that too. Um, but what we also know is two planes create an axis. So that axis is either created by two planes or vice versa. However, at the end of the day, you are getting three orthogonal planes centered at the bolt pattern here. Does everybody see that? So we're still creating, even though we're using a bolt pattern as a datum feature, the datum that that creates is either going to be an axis and a plane or two planes however you want to view that, whatever's easiest for you to view. But we're still getting this origin, this datum reference frame, this perfectly orthogonal datum reference frame that this irregular part is getting locked into. Everybody see that? And again, it doesn't matter if, if it's hard for you to picture it, say if this were an irregular pattern of holes on a square part and there's not much symmetry to it, right? Let's say that this, this pattern is like this. Well, it doesn't really matter where we decide to locate these crosshairs, these planes, if you're looking down at the part, as long as you have basic dimensions locating everything, and fully defined, if you're fully defining those true positions, it doesn't matter if your origin is here or if your origin ends up being on this hole, or maybe the origin is just arbitrarily, but everything is picked based off of each other and can be located to each other and create this datum reference frame because based on the datum reference frame, we're just locating. All we're worried about is locating the true position of each one of these holes creating a datum reference frame. And now if we have a different feature that's located at that datum reference frame, we just want to make sure the basic dimensions fully define true position, right? If we're worried about the position of a hole, let's for say, for example, we're worried about the true position and how far it deviates, not necessarily how far it is from our origin. We don't necessarily care anymore how far, if this is two inches, we don't care if that hole is two inches from this edge. We want to know how far it is from true position, regardless of where our quote unquote imaginary datum reference frame ends up, we just want to make sure we're defining it back to those features. These features are functional features that get used in the assembly that locate the part, then essentially, and then indirectly locate that feature as well. So again, the pattern of holes, very common to use as a datum, um, a datum feature that then creates the datum. And again, the datum here is either gonna be two planes or a plane and an axis. Um, it's easy to picture the axis, the center axis of those um, features and then a plane symmetrically about it. That's the best way to picture it, if that's how it is for you. Any questions about this? Again, for me, it's easiest to picture the functional gauge that would get used in this scenario to picture how it's controlling the datum reference frame. Our goal is to be your best source for GDT information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GDT on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GDT community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GDT and print reading quizzes, download helpful charts, and access articles written by our training experts.